For those who don't know how to find me on other social media platforms, y'all can find me. Uh, well, for the Omnius Podcast, you can find the Omnius Podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So just put in the Omnius Podcast and you'll find it. All right. But what's good, everybody? Welcome to the Omnius Podcast. This is episode 77. All right. Let's get into it. We're we going to talk about Miss Miss Suki Hana real quick. Okay, so she's been blowing up in the news today or this week, aside from uh, the Home Depot girl, which I have a YouTube video that I'm going to uh, be posting about that. So <laughs> I won't hit up on the, on the Home Depot girl in this podcast or in this video. So I'll wait till I come out with the YouTube video and then I'll speak on it, you know, on... You know, on a live stream or whatever the case is. But let me turn off the um, AC as well because I don't want that to uh, get into the audio and stuff like that. And then y'all can also hear me more. Uh, y'all can hear me more clean. Okay. <laughs> more clear. But um, so we're going to deal with, with different like different layers of this topic because I know some people um they know that I present a certain a certain message about uh the wild feminine archetype and about the sacred whore. Okay. So when it comes to Sukihana, first off, I've always had a distaste for Sukihana. Okay. I've always had a, a despise for Sukihana. Ever since twenty seventeen when I saw her come out with a music video where she was twerking on graveyards I don't know if y'all remember that but that's the first time I was introduced to Sukihana now I don't know what specific um, music video that was exactly but she was twerking on graveyards and she just caused havoc ever since I remember she did another music video where she was in a like a mark uh, like a like a store like she was in a store and like I remember there was this grandmother <laughs> there was a grandmother on the side and you know she had all her friends up and down the aisle just twerking and stuff and the grandmother the poor grandmother just just looking at her with all type of disgust poor grandma I forgot when that was that was somewhere around 2017 ever since then I've had a despise for uh Sukihana so Anywho, leading on to her career, she basically got into the industry. I don't know if y'all remember um, her video when she was talking about how she sold her soul to the devil and basically was trying to call for help and that she's trying to get out of the industry ASAP. And then she like went ghost for a couple of months and then she came back and like she rejuvenated herself. She became an even bigger uh, city girl, hot girl, whatever than she was before. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what maybe there was a little glitch in her her hypnosis, her MK Ultra. I don't know what was going on. But <laughs> she was was out here talking about she sold her soul to the I don't know if y'all remember that. She sold her soul to the devil, yada yada yada, the industry and she done messed up and uh I don't know, maybe they gave her some extra stacks. They got her. They got her life together. Like, listen here. We 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 got the people on 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 dial. Okay, if you don't want to be the next Aaliyah, you're gonna do what we tell you to do. <laughs> if you if you don't if you don't want to end up like Left Eye, then you're gonna listen to what we gotta say. So, anyways, she done got her act together, and now she she out here. Doing what she does best, and that's causing recklessness. And her music isn't even good. You know, like, I can tolerate Megan Thee Stallion. I can tolerate, um, who's some other women that, that speak sexual in their music? I could tolerate, like, Jasmine Sullivan. I could tolerate, um, I could tolerate Cardi, Cardi B sometimes. Not all the time. Sometimes. I cannot tolerate Sukihana and the City Girls. City Girls just came out with a song called I Want a Thug. 
Good luck with that. I don't know how how that's going to do for you. That you want to thug. Ari Lennox. Yeah. Miss Ari. She she has a very smooth, like very uh Jill Scott way of like talking about sex and stuff like that. So I can I can I can t- I can deal with Ari, Jasmine, you know, I could deal with certain female artists that talk about those type of things. I cannot deal with Suki Hana. I cannot. And Sexy Red, she, she's a new up-and-coming uh, artist. She just did an interview talking about how she got chlamydia twice. Yeah, so there you have that. <laughs> but, you know, uh, Sexy Red and, and Suki Hana, they did a, a music video with uh, NLE Choppa, you know, talking about... Uh, I forgot what the song was called, but it was a very sensual song and stuff like that. But Suki Hana cannot stand her style, her music. I mean, like, the closest that I can actually respect her is just her being true to herself. She don't care what how you feel about her, and she don't care about what it comes to, like, how you feel of how she comes off. But her, her composure... And everything concerning her music is just off. Just completely off. It's, it's about as off as Black China giving her life to Christ. Very off. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how somebody like Black China gave her life to Christ and tried to do a little switch of Rooney and giving disrespect to my homie Baphomet. Like, how you gonna disrespect the homie? You can't disrespect the homie Baphomet. You know what I mean? Just, just crazy. But anyways, <laughs> Sukihana has um, been popping in the news because people have been saying that she has been um, harassed or assaulted by YK Osiris. Um, basically, there's a video. I don't know if y'all seen the video. I don't have it on my phone. But basically, there's a video going out there of... Osiris basically kissing up on her and, and kissing her on the lips and touching her a, t- a certain type of way. And in the video, women were speculating that she was getting uncomfortable with Osiris, with, with Mr. YK Osiris. I hope I'm saying his name right. Is that his name? YK Osiris. Okay, I was right. YK Osiris. Um... And from what I'm seeing right now, basically, she's made a video already discussing the topic of what happened with her and Sukihana and basically apologized to Sukihana. Now, I don't know how all this goes and all this other type of stuff. I don't know how, (laughs) you know, but if you if you know the industry, like behind the scenes, they get they get their freak on. They certainly get their freak on. If you listen to some of these like like Osiris and and some of these young boys in the in the industry, I don't even know why I'm saying young boys like like I'm not the same age as them. <laughs> but if you listen to people like Justin Bieber, even Usher, you know, and like people when they first get into the industry, they 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 be getting their freak on. Like some of these women be turning these young boys out. I wouldn't I wouldn't think it's a reach if Sukihana got her freak on with with Mr. Osiris. You know, because they be they be doing this type of stuff behind the scenes. Like we all know Diddy. We all know Diddy like men. OK, let's just be honest. We all know Diddy likes ping. We know P- Diddy likes the, the dingling. OK, there's, there's, there's no telling how many men that Diddy done turned out in the industry. Everybody knows this. People done went to his Hollywood parties and and men touching up on him and stuff like that. People know what Diddy be into. It's the same thing with R. Kelly. Who you think R. Kelly was hanging around? <laughs> he was hanging around Diddy. He was hanging around Jay-Z. You know what I mean? Jay-Z getting his freak on too. If you look at J- Jay-Z, and, and I hate to say it, but Ali was getting passed around too. Aaliyah was getting passed around. 
You think R. Kelly was bad. <laughs> There's a lot of people that had their hands on, on Miss Aaliyah. I don't condone it, but in the industry, that's what be going on. Jay-Z had his hands. Um, Diddy. DMX. DMX was crying. That man was boo-hooing when, when Aaliyah died. <laughs> like I said, I, I don't condone, but that's what the stuff that that's what be happening behind the scenes. So when I saw what happened between Osiris and Sukihana, I don't think some of these things that happened on screen happened by by coincidence. I think some of the stuff that you see, like when when Diddy and Usher was talking about how they used to wrestle in the bed when Usher, when Usher was younger and, and Kevin Hart was like whoa are we just gonna excuse what Diddy just said like when Diddy slipped up talking about they be wrestling in the bedroom for cereal like that is that is in the words of Riley Freeman that is that is gay that is gay you know what I mean hold on camera Hold on, I'm talking to somebody right now. I'm talking to somebody right now. Hold on. But yeah. Um, that, that, that stuff crazy. Like. <laughs> Let me read that again. <laughs> oh, we're getting passed around. We all, everybody, twin, we all going. No, I understand that. But I'm just saying, like, when it when it comes to the way they be getting down in the industry, they be on some freak freak stuff, you know. Especially like, Lord forbid, you get raised up in like the like the Disney, the, the like the Disney World and Nickelodeon and stuff. Like, some of them people are messed up. Orlando Brown, Miley Cyrus, Demi Lovato, messed up. You could hear about Jeanette McCrary and, um, you know, you could read her book or listen to some of her interviews about, you know, stuff that be happening behind the scenes. Like <laughs> Ariana Grande, there's many people like the industry be, be on some other stuff. Yeah, I know. I know you didn't mean that part, but, you know, uh, but yeah, like when, when dealing with Sukihana, I didn't have sympathy for her off rip because I know what type of like archetype that she plays in the industry and from the looks of it from the looks of the video she didn't seem like she didn't seem like she was uncomfortable now that might be controversial to say because how could you say something like that and, and you don't know what us women go through and you know all the no, no, just just chill out chill out all right take a take a chill pill <laughs> i'm just saying the way that sukihana comes off I mean, we're talking about somebody that was romanticizing eating ass to Drewski. You know what I mean? Making a song talking about she wants to eat another man's bottle. That that that's 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 completely beyond me. You know? I don't understand that for the life of me. I think, this is my theory, I think Osiris and Sukihana did a couple of things behind the scenes. That's my theory. That's just my theory. <laughs> I think I think they had a little something, something going on. I heard somebody say also that Sukihana was trying to like pull game or trying to flirt with Osiris. And then that was Osiris' response to her. And that's why he was he was getting her by the neck and he was kissing her and all those type of stuff. That's what they be doing. I mean, you heard about Terry Crews. What well, Terry Crews is different. Terry Crews is just a punk. Now, would I say Terry Crews is a punk to his face? No, because Terry Crews built like Bobby Lashley. <laughs> but since I'm in my safe, my safe space, I could say Terry Crews was a punk. He had this this old white man, you know, playing with his balls in front of his wife. You know what I mean? Somebody asked, how do you feel about 
ass eating in general. Very caucasity. Very, very caucastic of you to ask me that. <laughs> How do I feel about it? Lord have mercy. I'll just say this. If you a man that likes to get their bottom played with. um, Yeah, you got to go. You just got to go. That's very wild. Very wild for a man to like his, his bottom getting played with and stuff. Like that's. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. If a man like to get his bottom played with. Fam. You know it's pride month though. You know what I'm saying? It's pride month. You You, you want to come out now. Now is the time. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to judge you. But. You like to get your bottom played with. That's on you. You know what I mean? That's on you. I ain't, I ain't got nothing. Ain't nothing, to, nothing else to say. <laughs> Terry Terry been suspect for a while. He has been suspect for a while. Oh, like men eating? Eating ass? Mm. I don't know. Well, for the fellas up in here, y'all, y'all, y'all like to eat booty. We got some booty eaters in here. I came looking for booty. We could do this the easy way, or we can do this the hard way. The choice is yours. So what's it gonna be, nigga? <laughs> Let me find out. We got some. We got some booty eaters up in the in the chat. I ain't judging though. But, I mean, we got we got we got some nice, sweet, sweet, sweet yams. Okay, some nice, nice, sweet yams there. You know what I'm saying? And you want to eat the ass? That don't make sense. Like, what? <laughs> why? Why would the ancestors? Why would the supreme universe bless you with some sweet yammy whammies? And you just want to go for the filter. Like you just want to go for the sewage. Like I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. It ain't clicking. Something not clicking. Something. <laughs> now maybe in the, in the process you might be eating and then you go. Whoop. You know what I'm saying? Like maybe, maybe you just go in, you going down. Your, 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 your tongue accidentally may, may fling up there. Patience. But you all, you just out there like, uh, like you just, you just in there, you in there, like, sw like you swimming, you swimming in her bottom. Like that's, yes, yammy whammies. You, there are some sweet yammy whammies that you can just get there and devour and you want to go for her bottom. No, 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 sir. No, we are better than this. Dr. Umar would not approve of this. <laughs> no. Anyways, but somebody somebody else asked me a question as well. Uh, let me see. Yeah, the Fleece Johnson reference. <laughs> I met a 25-year-old virgin. I think I should just stay with her, bro. I mean, what, 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 I mean, what, <laughs> are you looking for a freak? No, I didn't disregard your question. I'm, I'm asking, so you're, you're with a 25 year old virgin and you're asking me if you should stay with her. Well, I mean, I mean, what, what exactly are you asking from her? Like, like, are you asking for her to be like Tiana Trump or, or <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you like. Are you trying to turn her inside out? Like, is is that what we getting at? I don't know what you what you asking me for. Nah, there be there be some there be some girls out there who ain't never got none, and they, you know, they they be their fantasies beyond this world. But I mean, 
in order to answer the question, I I just need some I need I need a little bit more elaboration. Like, the, does she not know how to work it in bed? Like, is is there like an issue with her and like how she can ride it? Like, is she not is she not pleasuring you or like is she not ready? Like, is she not does she not want to take that next step? You know what I mean? Is she a little anxious? Is she not? Is she not pleasuring you the way that that the typical freak would? <laughs> that's 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 what I want to know. Like, I can't I can't determine whether or not you should stay with her. You know, I don't I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> I don't. I really don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm doing my best though. Like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm sticking it through right now. Like, we, we dealing with it right now. He's tired of the hand job. Y'all chill out. <laughs> I mean, it's not impossible to turn a girl who ain't had much experience into a free. You know, you just have to be on a certain like level to do that type of stuff. You know what I mean? So, no, I I can't add you right now. I'm doing I'm doing my podcast right now. <laughs> just just put it in the chat. What I should do, I wonder, like maybe one day, I could find a way to um connect my camera and stuff to my uh, laptop and stuff, so I can have the audio. I just know the audio won't sound good. Um, if I add you on my podcast or if I add you on the live stream, you know, cause I'm going to be cutting these up into like different reels and stuff like that. So I need to, <laughs> I need to have it concise. Uh, where she want her cherry popped after y'all. <laughs> what has the chat turned into? You see what you done did Quan? <laughs> she do got that beast in her. And, and it definitely takes the right one to to bring that out, right? Matter of fact, you know what? Story time. Time for a little story time. So, came across this lovely, lovely, beautiful Caribbean woman. Beautiful Caribbean woman, right? And when I first met her, she wasn't into um, she wasn't into pleasuring herself. She wasn't into uh, getting head. Crazy, right? A woman not wanting head. A woman not knowing how to pleasure herself. She wasn't into men like having their way with her. Because the men that she's been with never really gave her any pleasure. Tragic. Very tragic story. Until she came across your boy. And I don't mean to toot my own horn. Till she came across your boy. And ever since then, she's never been the same again. This woman went from not having any toys to having four. Four. Okay. And we got names for them too. <laughs> she done named her toys. That's the crazy part. She went from not knowing how to orgasm. To she didn't even know she could squirt. She went from not having like not reaching her climax to she didn't even know that she came because she never came. A man never like made her reach that that climax before. Ridiculous. So yes, it it takes the right one. It it definitely takes the right one. Yes, I, I got to testify. I got to testify to let the fellas know if you with a woman that, that isn't well experienced with her body or herself and stuff like that. If you really if you truly see potential in her, you can see it through. It's not impossible. You can definitely see it through. But if you're looking for somebody who is a, an inside out freak off rip. You might want to you might want to lay aside your ego and find you a woman that's been out here in these screes. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with, with cuffing a hoe. You can turn a hoe into a housewife. You can you can definitely 
turn a woman who's been out in the streets for the house. There, there's some, there's some very loyal, sweet hoes out here. They, they, they know how to cook. They know how to rub your feet. They know how to, to make your bath water. They know how, how to, uh, uh, give you massages. They know how to talk to you right. There's some, there's some nice, delicate, divine, holy harlots out here in these screes. Yes, you may not like it. Your your ego, I understand, fellas. Your ego get to you, and oh my God, how many men she done been with? But listen, this woman will have your your toes curling up like this. When when she riding, have your toes curling up like this. She sound like a washing machine when she going down on you. I'm just being honest. The woman. She sound like a, a, a dishwasher. You ever turn a dishwasher on, on the pots and pans and go. And you telling her to stop and she won't stop. And your eyes rolling back and you looking like the undertaker. I'm telling you fellas. But your ego. Your ego. You speaking from experience. That's none of your business. <laughs> Focus. Focus. The point is, is that you have to learn to set aside the ego in order for you to to get the experience, the package, you know, the resort package that you want in life. You know what I mean? You 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 got to you got to you got to pick your your you, you got to pick your, you know, your pros and cons. Right. OK. So you may have been out here in these streets. You may have been been you know she's been experiencing she's been around town thugging with her rounds her pussy pink her booty hole brown she may she may she may have been out here but I'm telling you it'll all be worth it in the end because now you get the exclusive you know what I'm saying now you you get the the tricks up her sleeve you you see what I'm saying but we're, we're saving those topics for another time for another day. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> How did we even get here? We was over here talking about Sukiyana. Lord have mercy. Consciousness and coochie. <laughs> it should be though. Low key, low key. Uh, freak Neek. Hey, yo, them Freak Neeks would be crazy though. Especially like back in the back in the seven, but well, not the seventies, the nineties. They begin their whole freak out. It's a whole different level. And you know, in in the spiritual realm, for my spiritual Negroes out in the chat, they begin their freak out. Some of these Negroes, they they scared of a of a succubus. I love succubus. Please visit me in the midnight hour. I have had my fun with a good amount of succubus spirits. Y'all be y'all be scared, thinking they're gonna devour your soul. Devour, please. I give full permission. You gonna get you gonna get a, an excellent rebirth. That's all I'm saying. That's all I gotta say. This is the most wild episode I've ever done. This is. <laughs> This is the most wild episode ever. Oh, the best as a pussy pig, Ashe. <laughs> Not the Bobby Hibbit. <laughs> the sex talk, the best. You know what? We gonna. I might have to put that into my my podcast episode. Just talk about a little experience. Just give a little, little, little season, a little razzle dazzle, just to. Cause some some of these girls out here they ain't they ain't put on game, and I don't even know where the, where the man went. Cause he's supposed to be getting like some answers, or we're supposed to be giving um, I'm supposed to be helping him figure out whether or not he want to be with the girl. But he wasn't answering my questions. Like, I mean, is she is she teachable? You know what I'm saying? Does she is she teachable enough to know how to ride it? Does she, you know, everybody has to start somewhere. You know what I mean? But I mean if you want if you want you know what I'm saying, if you can't wait that long, just send her back to the streets. Send her 
like, like you know how Jesus sent out the disciples, go forth and, and teach my gospel. Well, send her out. Let her get a couple of dicks. Let her let her get her body game up. And then bring her back. It's like a yo-yo. Just woo. Just I don't know how to do the yo-yo sound effects. I'm sorry. <laughs> but just just do that. If if she's not that well experienced, well advanced. Send her forth. Send her out there like a like a like a disciple. Just go forth. Slob on knobs like corn on a cob. Just just let her go around town. Come back in a couple of years. I guarantee she gonna be out here like Sarah J. She gonna be out here like Misty Stone. That's all I'm saying. She gonna be out here like the next Pinky. That's all I'm saying. This is definitely Bobby getting Bobby him advice. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta pour the libations. <laughs> uh, if I can't, if he can't find the clip, he may as well pack it up. That's that's some wild stuff, though. Like how you can't find the clip, fam. That really be some wild stuff. There be some a hey, Kira Noir. Listen, they don't know about no Kira Noir, though. They don't know about her. Pink Diamond, Skin Diamond, Sarah Banks. Lord have mercy. Anna Fox. Some of y'all know who I'm talking about. Don't don't even act like y'all know who I'm talking about. Some of y'all some of y'all up and righteous Negroes. I don't watch those type of things. Just just disgusting, Taro. I would never filter my mind with such blasphemous images. Jada Fire. Come on now. Y'all know what I'm y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Don't 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 get quiet on me now. Y'all know y'all know exactly who I'm talking about. Cher Cherokee. Lord have mercy. I had some times with her videos back in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. Isn't Jada Fire? Isn't that the girl from um? She was the girl from the uh, the Popeyes video, right? The 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 drive through. Every Negro will remember that video. That stuff was crazy. That stuff, that stuff, went, that stuff went crazy. Naomi. Yeah. And um, this one girl that I just found out about like last year. The Mini Stallion. That girl like 4'8". 4'9". And yet she could still get snuggled up like a pretzel. That's what you call fun size. You know what I mean? Like that's that's the pure like definition of fun size. That's all I'm saying. Health code violation. <laughs> You get some crazy, crazy neck. Uh, you'll forget about all them bodies. Facts, though. That, that, that That's all I'm saying. Like, some, some men, they be so worked up about how many men she done been with. Who cares? Who cares? You know what I mean? Like, who cares how many men she done been with? You know? It's like what I heard one pimp say. Like, when you start with me, you you this is your new beginning. Because all them other men ain't on my level. That's what I heard a pimp say. <laughs> he said he don't care how many men she done been with. Because when you start with me, you start from the beginning. Because he was like, I'm on a whole nother level. And you only going to meet one me. I said, well, God dang. God dang. I had a conversation. I had a little, like, little debate with one of my friends about um, body count. And she was saying, like, would I be with a woman that had, like, 50 body counts? And I sat there and I waited. And I thought about it. I was like, yeah. Yeah. 
She was like, how? How could you be with somebody with that many body counts? I said, well, at the end of the day, most women who think that their body count is miraculously high are not going to tell the average Negro that their body count is 50. Most women are going to tell you it's three. So when I'm with her, it's not like I'm going to know either way. And when she finds out that I'm on a whole different level and I don't really care about that type of stuff. And she tells me, yeah, I've been with, I've been around town. I've been around with, with deck, like, like dozens. I don't care. It don't bother me <laughs> because if her mind, if her, if her mind, right. And this is like when we're dealing with Bobby Hemmett, Bobby Hemmett talks about like when you deal with a woman who's spiritual and she used to be out here in these streets, she she's on a whole different advanced level because now not only does she know her body, but then when she on a spiritual level and then plus knowing her body at the same time, that's when you tap into Baduism. That's how that's how Erica Badu done turned Andre three thousand and and Common. That's how she turned these these men inside out. When you when you mess with a spiritual three hundred four. That's when you get this rebirth. <laughs> That's when you get baptized in the name of the father, in the name of the mother, and in the name of the son. That's when you when you when you get baptized in that holy ghost, that holy mother. And now they they on a whole different level. You ever you ever see men mess with certain women and and they start going crazy? Well, when a woman knows herself, and she on that spiritual level, and you lay down with her, you ain't never gonna be the same. <laughs> you gonna be out here speaking poems from the from the Akashic records, like it's gonna be on a whole different level. <laughs> Your creativity will be maximized. I remember I was messing with I was messing with this Haitian girl, like in my late teens early 20s i was messing with this i was messing with this uh haitian girl and like after messing with her like i started to get a's and b's on my grades i was like i got a b in math <laughs> <laughs> at best a d i would get in math i got a b in math like how did i get a b in math i started getting a's and b's i started finding money in different places I started getting money in different places. My following started going up. I started having videos start going viral. I said, like, "What's going on here? Like, what? <laughs> what did I? What did I tap into? Like, what? What does she got going on? That stuff was crazy. That stuff was crazy. Even when me and her stopped messing with each other, like a little bit of that, whatever she had going on. You know how like them Caribbean women." them Haitian Jamaican women like they they be having something locked up in there and you in trouble if she named if she if you mess with a woman and and she done named her her vagina you're in trouble you're in trouble if you mess with a woman and she done named her vagina you are in trouble if she has a name it don't matter what it is, kiwi. If you, if she named it after a, a, a hurricane, <laughs> Katrina, Ivy, you are in trouble. Even if she not conscious, she she on a whole different level. She done tapped into something different. <laughs> if she named her pussy, you could run. You could run from it or you could run to it. <laughs> Either way, you're going to get caught up in the waves. I'm just going to tell you like it is. There ain't too many women out here that, that got the goods. And then they, they name it. What? I had a whole list of things to talk about. And <laughs> the chat was just really the highlight of this whole podcast. That's so crazy. What did I even have on my list? I was supposed to be talking about all this, this motivational, spiritual stuff. And we just got into the freaks. 
y'all freaks just done done slipped up the just switched up the whole conversation. Just wild. She preaches Kegels. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Not you go you gonna be brainstorming names tonight. Lord have mercy. I just done gave I just created a monster. Lord have mercy. It was this girl that I knew and um she nicknamed her she nicknamed her her uh her Punani uh Katrina. Mm. Lord have mercy. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I know, I know. Katrina done caused some damage for for some families, but it did me justice. Yes, it did. Anyways, <laughs> but um. Uh, you know what? I don't even know that was traumatic for you. It was not. If it was traumatic, it it was an awakening. If it, if it was traumatic, it was a, it was a good trauma. Them flashbacks. Lord have mercy. You know what? You're right. You're right. We must stay focused. <laughs> we must stay focused. Lord, am I sweating? What the. F <laughs> Like, am I sweating? What, what, what is this? Anyways, y'all done got me worked up. It, this, this, this is unbelievable. Crazy. She named her Gushers. That is wild. Where are you from? From Georgia. From Georgia. Um, it's easy for you to say you carry the deadly. Don't, don't do her. You ain't gonna do my, my friend, Miss Sierra, like that. Yeah, she right. We must stay focused. Okay. Okay. Even if I'm over here sweating, I don't even know how I started sweating just now. That's so crazy. Oh, uh, <laughs> sweat. Think about Katrina. No, listen, listen. Ain't even all that. Ain't even all that deep. Okay. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Yeah, they got him in the heat. Listen, y'all chill out. Y'all chill out. I ain't even... I wasn't even supposed to be talking about this to begin with. I ain't be... I really am sweating. Like, this is crazy. This is... I don't even be sweating like this. In my podcast. This is... Wild. I'm sweating like a reverend. <laughs> Almost. It's close enough. Lord. Can we can we change the subject? Can we <laughs> let's get back on subject? Let's let's talk about something something motivational, inspirational. You know what I mean? Something something that can move people to be better. You know what I mean? Just just something that we could talk about. You know what I'm saying? You know, open the floor gates. <laughs> I done opened the floodgates of heaven. Now it's raining. Y'all, y'all just wild. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things. Back to Suki. Thank you. Okay, back to Suki Hana. Um, yeah, I don't feel bad for her. Reason being is because one, she didn't feel bad. She didn't feel bad about. Like what happened between her and Osiris. And like I said with my theory. Like at the end of the day. I think they have a little something something going on behind the scenes. Right. I think they had a little something, something going on behind the scenes. Second. Um, Suki Hana puts herself out as like. A literal sex object. Like a literal object. Like to be used. And to be. Um, not necessarily taken advantage of. But. Like, she she don't, you know, she don't, she don't back down from her occupation. <laughs> I got to give her my respects on that. That's the only thing that I can actually, like, 
respect her about. That's the only thing I can really respect her about is is um, that she she's an honest hoe. <laughs> you can't be mad at that. Some women they want to like they want to like like hide it. They don't want to be too much into it. They don't want to be a little ashamed. But she's just out here. I can't hate the player. I can't hate the player. But that don't mean I got to like it either. So. I don't think she was taken advantage of personally. If she was taken advantage of. She would have said it. At the same time. Um, there are women out here who are like Sukihana. And there are things that have happened to them. When they were kids. You know what I'm saying? When they were younger. And so those type of things. Like how Osiris came up to her and did that. Maybe those type of things. Like she 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 been used to those type of things or she been used to how men would would do stuff like that to her. But then again, like I said, my theory is that I think they got a little something, something going on behind the scenes. I think they done did some things. That's what I think. She wants attention. That could be that could be true as well. I think she she out here like pulling off publicity stunts. Just to get people talking. You know how the industry be sometimes. You know. <clears throat> yes she is very honest. She's very honest in her songs. And she don't back down. One thing I will say that really surprised me though. When she was in an um, interview. And she was talking about. Like she came from a, a long lineage of hoes. That descend all the way back. Before slavery to Mesopotamia and Egypt. I said. Suki Hana spitting facts? <laughs> that was the biggest Uno reverse card I have ever witnessed. What does Suki Hana the goat know anything about the sacred prostitutes, the sacred harlots of ancient times? Which is something else I was going to talk about too. Um, Suki Hana, even though she, she out here and she a 304 I wouldn't qualify her as being a sacred harlot. That's just me. Like I've I've came across a lot of sacred harlots in my time. None on on the like on the status of Sukihana. You know, there's a certain way that that a sacred harlot, you know, carries herself and it, it doesn't even have to deal with like the occupation of being promiscuous. But it's a certain way that you carry yourself, a certain freak that you are, and stuff like that. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, 60 rise. Uh, 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 let me scroll down. She did that though. Why? I don't classify her as a sacred harlot because, like, the way that the the archetype of the sacred harlot. Oh, never mind. I'm gonna explain anyway. <laughs> I just, I just had my mindset just now. Anyway, I don't classify Sukihana as a sacred harlot because the way that the archetype um, of that goes, and uh, everybody explains it, or they they show it in a different way. So you could be in the occupation and be a sacred harlot, or you could be out of it. But it's a certain set of like femininity that you carry yourself with um, for you to be, you know, into that. Or for you to carry yourself in that characteristic or archetype as a sacred harlot. So, you know, you out here walking around with that Ishtar energy. You're walking around with the Aphrodite energy and stuff like that. You know, that's, to me, that's what it, that's what a sacred harlot is. You're walking around with your mind straight. <laughs> At the same time, Sukihana could be representing... Um, a very antagonistic way of her energy because everybody has the energy everybody can tap into the energy it doesn't matter who you are so Sukihana could be tapping into some very dark dark forces that I just may not be particularly familiar with and don't want to be familiar with <laughs> that's a different set of recklessness I don't want to know anything about some people may classify that as low vibrational Whatever the case may be, but that is not something I want to, that's not a stream I want to walk down, 
or get involved with. When I hear when I hear somebody talk like Sukihana, or when I hear somebody talk like Glorilla, I run the other way. That is not that is not my my taste of coffee. <laughs> Examples of of like celebrities. I don't I don't know too many celebrities who are uh, sacred harlots. Now, Erica Badu. I mentioned Erica Badu. She's she's in the ranks. Beyonce, she's in the ranks. Um, Janet, Janet Jackson, Miss Janet, she's up there. She is definitely up there. Um, I can't think of anybody at the moment, but those those were a few. Janet Jackson. Beyonce, Erica Badu. And they don't do too much, right? They do they do enough for you to recognize and they have a very natural sex appeal. You know what I'm saying? They ain't gotta do all that stuff that Sukihana be doing. <laughs> you might see you might see Erica Badu play around a little bit, but they don't have to do too much for you to recognize who they are. You know what I mean? Um, what do you think about Cardi? I don't think Cardi is a... I think she... Well, let me just say this. Uh, Cardi, she she do be tapping into the energy. Like, when I saw her with Normani, um, you know, she, she tap into it. And a lot of, like, Hispanic women, a lot of Hispanic women, like, they they practice... They practice that energy. They They, they be tapping into that energy. Um, a lot of Hispanic people, they, they tap into like that, um, Afro soul, you know, energy, the Pampa Jira, you know, Nia Long, I'm not too familiar with Nia Long, but I know she was fine back in her day on, on Bel Air. Um, not too familiar with Megan Good either, <laughs> but I mean, if you see it in her, you know, I'll, I'll check back. I'll do a little, little rerun. Um, so a wholesome woman that's a freak too, basically. Oh, you talking about with the sacred harlot? Yeah. There's, cause like there's different ways to express the, the Devi energy, right? So what I call in my concept, the primordial Devi, the primordial Devi, um, that I got from the Hindu mythology of the primordial mother. Um, Devi just means mother. Or a uh, name for the goddess, or whatever the case is. Um, so the Devi energy, or for for somebody to embody being the deviant harlot, um, it deals in many different ways. It it expresses itself in many different ways. So um, your average P star or adult star could be a sacred harlot, or the woman who is the co-pastor to a pastor could be the sacred harlot. Or the woman who is, you know, at the supermarket could be the sacred harlot. <laughs> you know, the woman that you might think is the most righteous and the most innocent on social media. There's some women that I know that just so righteous. They don't even want to show their body on social media. They don't even want to show leg, hips, you know, legs and hips. Like, they don't even want to show none of that. But as soon as they meet the man, the love of their life. Or they mean a man that they love. They popping it spread wide open. Anywho. It's not always to deal with um, sex either. Um, being the sacred harlot can also deal with healing. Because the sexual energy is also healing energy. And it's creativity. And it's inspiration. So if a woman has um, inspired like many men. You know, many men love to hang around her. Many men love to talk to her. Many men love to be around her. It don't even have to just be on a sexual level. Like, they just love to, like, get stuff off of their head. And, like, in that communication that they have, she releases his stress without even touching him. You know, so there's there's different occupations or different ways to express that energy. The word, uh, the word whore 
it's not even like associated originally with sex. It was to deal with women who contain the light or women who contain enlightenment. Uh, because it's through the feminine that you're able to get to the father, right? So when you hear Jesus talk about like a man can't be reborn or a man can't enter into the kingdom unless he be reborn, he's telling you that you can't enter into enlightenment. You can't be the Christ. You can't be reborn. Um, you can't be reborn unless you are born again. You can't enter on the other side or reach supreme consciousness until... You reach the mother until you pass the trials. Jezebel. I love me some Jezebel. This is how, this how I know we, we, we tapping in. Because <laughs> I told myself I was going to talk about Jezebel in my podcast and I didn't write it down. I love me some Jezebel. I love it. I love the spirit. I love the energy. I love everything about Jezebel. Now, some people might come across Jezebel and think that she was this evil and and this is what we get from the church that Jezebel was this evil promiscuous perverted just blasphemous queen and that she was leading the Israelites to idol worship and idolatry and and all this type of stuff right far beyond the truth <laughs> everybody knows that when the victor writes the story there's always going to be a, a sort of propaganda um, Jezebel was a beautiful and confident and courageous character in the Jewish mythology. And basically the, the Israelites found her to be a threat because they, they kept their women subservient to them. So when a woman of power came into the midst, it messed with their ego. <laughs> they could not stand that a woman had this type of power and had so much confidence and boldness in their lands. To such a point that when they finally gained their power back, the first thing they did, one of the first things they did was take Jezebel and throw her out of her goddamn room. But before she, you know, before they did all of that, you know, she put on the set of makeup and that there was a, a Jezebel look. Which people called that Jezebel look like when a woman looks at a man and, um... Like in, in a flirtatious manner or whatever the case is, right? And so that's what they call the Jezebel look. When when a woman you ever see a woman that looks at you like they about to like they about to devour your soul. <laughs> like 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 Miss uh what's her name? What's her name? Miss Carter, Miss Jackson from from Martin. She was like, I am gonna eat you alive Like <laughs> like like that, basically. And so people associate that with Jezebel, but Jezebel was a whole was on a whole different level. So when you're dealing with the Jezebel spirit, it's nothing bad. Every woman should want to embody the Jezebel spirit, but there are many different ways to express it. You don't have to be a reckless 304 to be in your Jezebel spirit. Some people just deem you being Jezebel by wearing certain clothing. Some people think you're Jezebel because uh, you got red lipstick on. <laughs> Some people think you're Jezebel because you're dressed too tight. You out here wearing booty shorts and it's 90 degree weather. I just saw a Hebrew Israelite woman talk about um, that a woman is being promiscuous and going against the most high because she wear crop tops. What? <laughs> Women are now... Going against the most high because they're wearing crop tops in the summer. She was like, you could put a shirt under that crop top. You over here showing your skin. How did we get here? With <laughs> crop tops? And you know how the Israelites be. They still be in that medieval times. Women can't wear uh women can't wear pants because that's what men do. Men wear pants. All this stupid stuff. They'd be, I mean, if you see an Israelite caught with some shorts, let alone some pants, oh, they in trouble. The most high gonna get on them. Ridiculous. They out here dressed like their grandmother. <laughs> they be out here dressed like their grandmother. They be taking it to a whole different level. 
And, you know, it's, if, 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 if that's what works for them on a spiritual level, you know, that it is what it is. It is what it is. But I refuse to have a woman I'm into out here, you know, walking with a tablecloth around her. We out here going to the beach and you want to be out here dressed like somebody's auntie. You don't want to wear the bikini because you don't want to show off your body like that. You want to be out here walking with some some long shorts like you somebody just just crazy because you want to be modest. I can't stand that word modest. Modest. I can't stand the word modesty. <laughs> I ain't telling you to, to be out here just showing your whole ass, but modesty, ma'am, please. That's where all these horny grandmothers coming from. That, to be honest, to be honest, and, and the most the, the most freaks that you're gonna find is gonna be in the church. They gonna be in the church, cause cause where all these where all these baby mamas coming from? Why why is the church filled with baby mamas? <laughs> why is the church filled with single baby mamas? Got got three kids, four kids from two to three different men. It's not something ain't something in the water. Someone said my mom wasn't allowed to wear pants when she was younger. Ridiculous. Crazy. Just beyond me. What's good, Aborigine? Peace. But, um, suppressed throughout life. Yeah. Just suppressed to the, to the extent. Like, and that's, that's why Jezebel was such a threat. You know, when you read the story. Because they kept their women subservient. It, I mean, it doesn't take a, a, a theologian <laughs> to tell you that the women of that time according to their mythology in the old testament that those women were subservient those women did not have any sort of power you want i want to be a ruth i want to be eve i want to be a esther that's what they'll tell you these women had no power these women had no power you want to be lilith you want to be a jezebel that's what you want to be. Ruth, Esther, Sarah. These women had no power. <laughs> You're not going to get power from these women. Now, on an occult level and on a Gnostic level, you could get some power from Eve. You know, but generally... When you read the story, you're not going to get Eve is blamed in the Bible for why the world is, has gone bad. If you read the epistles of Paul, he blames Eve. He blames women, not just Eve. He blames women for why the world has gone into sin and why the world is, is turned upside down. Ain't that ridiculous? How are you going to blame women? For the world going for for the world going bad. Beyond me. That's why Jezebel was a threat. That's exactly why Jezebel was a threat. Beyond me. Someone said John ten thirty four. It was John ten thirty four. Oh, is it not written in your scriptures that ye are gods? Ah, uh, when Jesus was having the conversation with them. Yeah, even on a spiritual level, like you are your own entity in your world, you know. So don't be deceived when people try and tell you to look for something outside of yourself that's what jesus was telling the people don't be deceived by people when they tell you look here comes the son of man to come and because he said the kingdom of god won't be with observation jesus wasn't real either but what i'm saying is that <laughs> the whole point of the mythology or the story of jesus you know is telling you that 
the one that you're looking for to save you is within. The second coming of Christ is your rebirth. When you become born again, when you realize that the world that you live in is an illusion and it's deceptive and is leading you more so into your carnal self and instead of having that balance with your spiritual self, you know, and they feed on your desires and on your greed and on your uh, your sheepiness and all those other type of stuff. But yeah, that's the whole point of your spirituality is to is to become God. To become a goddess, you know, to tap into that that power that is within you, not to serve another, not to worship a God, not to wait for Jesus or a savior or somebody to come and save you. You know, it's not about you serving Jesus. Jesus never told his disciples to serve him. <laughs> Jesus told his disciples that you are my friends. You know, the works I do, you do also and greater how we how are you going to have Jesus, the Lord and Savior of your life, and he telling you that you can do better works to him? How are you serving Jesus? And Jesus told Mary in the Gnostic Gospels that don't look for the Son of Man because the Son of Man is within you. You know what I'm saying? And in, in the Gospel, when it tells you about the false Christ, the false Christ is what the Christians worship. What? Well, well. <laughs> rut row that's the that's the false christ the false christ is the one they're waiting on to save them and i got a personal relationship with jesus that's the false christ if you waiting on somebody to save you if you waiting on a jesus if you talking about you got a relationship with jesus that's the false christ that's the fake one the real Christ is the one you see in the mirror the real christ is your is your soul the real christ is the one within not the one you wait for in the sky. Are you God yet? Everybody's God. <laughs> it, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you another thing. Whether you realize it or not, you you walk out in an everyday motion as God. So it doesn't even matter if I think that I'm God or not, because to be God is to be the uh, creator and the leader of your own reality. So even when you tell yourself like I'm sick. Or I am sad or I can't do this or I can't do that. Right. Because the I am is basically referencing to the inner God within you or the supreme consciousness within you. And so once you grab a hold of how you think of yourself subconsciously, that is when you can shift your own reality. Now, I'm not perfect. To be God doesn't mean to be perfect. To be God means that you understand that you are the creator of your own life. You're the generator, operator, and destroyer, as the good ancestor C. Freeman L. said. You are the generator, operator, and destroyer. So everything around you, anything of how you respond, anything that you put out, you are the grand generator or operator of that. And it's your responsibility to destroy the negativity or the things that are very uh, delusional, uh, delusional in this world. So when it's it, when you're the destroyer, it is not talking about you causing havoc in the world. <laughs> it's you destroying those things which are holding you back. You destroying um, the things that are keeping you limited. And it's not going to be easy, but it's simple. You know, <laughs> it's not going to be easy for you to walk every day in the spirit. But the purpose of you being God is to manifest your own reality by balancing your light and your darkness. By you putting your lower self on a pedestal and humbling your higher self. Because there'll be a lot of self-righteous Negroes out here that think they are, they're better than thou because they dress right. Or they real crystals. Or I'm a vegan. <laughs> I don't beat my dick. Because you got some semen retention Negroes out here thinking that because they don't beat their dick. That they're more manly than people who do. Ridiculous. Spirituality ain't got nothing to do with how many times you beat your dick. It don't. I don't even know how we got there. <laughs> 
telling men to, to start practicing. I ain't telling you not to practice semen retention. I'm not telling you not to preserve your seed. But if you bust if you if you bust a nut every other day or whenever you want to, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. I don't even know how we how we got into this point of spirituality where you think how many how many nuts you bust determines your testosterone and your manhood. No. <laughs> no, that's not how the game works. Now, I I I I put a little put a little game on you real quick. When it comes to semen retention, right? This is what you deal with like the right-hand path because um people like people in the Buddhism and Hinduism, they teach to ascend the serpent. But when you deal with dark magic and alchemy, there's a way in which you can also elevate and levitate and empower yourself by also descending the serpent or descending that that substance, right? And I've heard some some spiritual teachers here. I even heard Bobby Hammond talk about ascending the serpent or ascending the semen up to the pineal gland. But you can also empower yourself by also descending the serpent or descending the semen. And that's when you get into your creative works and stuff like that. So. Yeah. It's not easy though. It's not easy to be coming back to back to back to back and all that other type of stuff. <laughs> yeah, don't go crazy and start shooting blanks. That, that that's not the <laughs> yeah, that's not the point of 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 doing all of that. But to to circle this back around, yeah, um, you are God, whether you like it or not. Everybody has to realize that. Now, if you are walking around with that God energy and you don't know how to utilize it or you don't know it, that's on you. But a lot of us, we, um, I said this in one of my previous videos, I haven't uploaded it yet, but I said this in one of my videos that when you, if you don't utilize that God energy, there are people out here who will use it against you. You know, if you don't understand who you are and un if you don't understand the power that you have, either you're going to use that energy or people out there are going to use it against you. So it don't matter whether or not you know how to use it or whether or not you know or not you're God. The people know. <laughs> the higher ups, the elites, they know. That's why they keep you dumbfounded. Because they 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 drain your energy. They feed on your energy. And when they have a mass of people aligning themselves to the way that they want them to think, that's the real power. People think that because people are in a certain position of power, that that's true power. When they say power to the people, there is real literal power to the people. <laughs> and this this was demonstrated in Dream or um, it was a next the Netflix show with Morpheus. I want to get the name right. With Morpheus, I don't think it was called Morpheus. It was called the Sandman, right? This was one of the last episodes in the Sandman and there was an analogy that they used with cats. And basically the cats were the ones that ruled the world. The cats were the ones that, you know, were running stuff. And it was the humans that were small like cats. But when all the humans gained consciousness of their power and they gained consciousness that they were better than the cats, they were the ones that grew into human form, human form. And the cats were the ones that were small. And so that's when they began to build civilization and all this other type of stuff. So the power isn't in the people in the higher ups. The power is in the people. <laughs> they use the power and they use propaganda. They use the media to get you to, you know, to react and to, you know, live a certain type of way. Now... If the people were to turn against the elites, yeah, there would be a, you know, there would be a, a, a falling. But society will fall as a whole as well. And there was going to be, you know, destruction. 
everything on everything was shattering and at that point you know so but anyways i'm rambling the point is you're god okay and you are responsible for your own reality as uh as i heard eric thompson even talk about there's no excuses <laughs> There's no excuses. Everything around you and everything in terms of your life is based upon how you respond to it. That's for me as well. You know, when you feel like you can't get through this or when you feel like you're not able to do that or I don't feel like going out and working out or I don't feel like making this video. That's you got to take your power back. <laughs> you can't allow your flesh or the, those internal thoughts or, you know, that the subconscious pattern. Or that programming to condition and control how you live in your life. So someone said, how do you get away from someone's, from someone else's energy sucking you into theirs? Get away. <laughs> Run. Just get away. Now, it just depends on the layers of this relationship. Because I don't know, I don't know what grand level it is from like getting away from someone who's sucking you into into their energy but yeah get away um <laughs> i mean that's that's probably about as clear as i can get um now if you're dealing with a relationship then that i mean there's different layers to that as well but yeah how do you get away from someone else's energy sucking you into theirs cut them off you have to find a way to disassociate yourself from that person and i i've came across people like that there was the girl i took the prom was a parasite and if she watches this you're a bitch yes she was a parasite she was gave me the worst prom experience ever she sure did it is what it is Uh, we lived together for 18 years, but he always says he feels so old and it makes me feel that way. Oh. <laughs> y'all stop laughing. She is. She was. I got to tell y'all that story someday. Uh, we, we we lived together. So is he your husband or? Yeah, boo her. Yeah, throw tomatoes. Is this like a... Um... Is he like your husband or something? Like, they've been living together for, for 18 years. Uh, he always feels so old. It makes me feel that way. Well, are there some... There might be some deeper layers to that. I don't know. Lord have mercy. Wait, you've been living with your boyfriend for 18 years? You've been living with your boyfriend for 18. Lord, I wish I had some Kevin Gla Kevin Samuel glasses on. <laughs> no disrespect, though. You've been living with your boyfriend for eight, 18. That's almost two decades. Okay. Okay. You've been living with your boyfriend for 18 years. Um, I need some I need some music to really help me like think about this though. Okay, just just bear with me. Bear with me. I need some music to help me think about this real quick. Let me let me. Let's just. I gotta think on this one.
damn, I don't. <laughs> Lord have mercy. 18 years, though. I mean. I don't even think Jesus could save you from this one. I just. <laughs> let me end my podcast real quick. And then we're going to we're going we're going to settle this. All right. But uh, thank you all for listening to me uh, for whatever I had in store. For this podcast, in terms of the other topics, we just get into it in episode 78. But this was one of my wildest podcast episodes, so I appreciate every last one of y'all. For those who are watching on, on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment your best part or whatever you got from this YouTube video. Comment it below. For those listening on Spotify, make sure you answer the poll at the very end or after this podcast episode. Tell me what you got personally from this podcast episode. So, till next time, we out. The waves brought me a song in the night That spoke in the softening light Words of a lonely one Remote from my castaway island, he lets his poems drift on the sea, immersed in the warmth of the current, they touch the deep.